Hey all, it's Aurelius. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how I organize my life using Notion. If you're unaware of what Notion is, simply put, it's a project management slash workspace system that works like Trello, Asana, Monday, and Basecamp. I first heard about Notion about a year ago from the time of this recording, and it was from a couple of YouTube videos that I watched, and I think the first was from Thomas Frank, another YouTube creator. And since then, I saw more and more creators and entrepreneurs talking about it and advocating how great and life-changing Notion really is. So that's when I started using Notion. And as I used Notion more and more, and I began to see how powerful Notion can really be. And as a past Trello and Basecamp user, I would say the difference, or the biggest difference in my opinion and ex from experience is that with Notion, you can create pages within pages and pages and pages, and even tables within tables. So that's a great thing and you can link certain things in a database to another particular page or project within Notion. I'm in no way sponsored by Notion. I'm simply showing my take on it and my experience of using Notion for the past year and as an entrepreneur, business owner, creator, and also in my personal life. So let's get started. As a little side note, as transparent as I wanna be in this video, there are a few details and information and projects that I can't reveal for non-disclosure and confidentiality reasons. And there are a few things, of course, that are more personal and private that I am not comfortable sharing, but I will share as much as I can, as much as possible in this video and how I structure it. So that's the main concept and what I wanna get across in this video. Let's start with my 2021 goals. And this is kind of the first page that I usually go to and see just so I can remind myself of what my goals are for this year. Now, before I get onto my 2021 goals workspace, I wanna show you my basic structure. On the left pane right here, you can see all the the organization and the projects that I have running and the different types of businesses that I have. So I've got my personal brand here and some of the things that I have like ideas and templates, but we'll get to the nitty gritty in this video as well. But on the right, of course, is the main workspace. So that's my overall structure that I follow. Now with that out of the way, the 2021 goals I have, the main structure is I have goals on one section right here, and then I categorize it based on personal, financial, relationships, education, skills, and business. Then I have a due date or kind of like a deadline for whatever it is that I wanna accomplish. I don't have it for all because some don't have a date or a deadline. So the great thing about Notion is you can create these kinds of categories and you can personalize it, customize it yourself. So you can see here, I've got business, personal relationships, education, skills, financial, and you can create new ones, new categories if you want by simply entering. So let's say you want this as health, okay? So I can create a new one called health and then now that'll be categorized as health and you can also change the color too by clicking that and then you can just simply choose a color from here. So nothing fancy, as I mentioned, the simpler you can make it, the better. If you have all these additional columns and features that are unnecessary, you're just going to overwhelm and complicate things. Now, moving on to goals, these are more longer term goals or goals for this year that I wanna accomplish and then looking at three to five years and even a 10 year goal. So you can see based on these dates, I've got a goal set uh, for under business, uh, July 1st, 2022, all the way up to 2030, which is one of my big goals, right? Big audacious goals. Goals are of course important. If you don't know what you're aiming for, then you're probably not gonna get there. So it's better to have it down rather than not having anything down on paper or in Notion, of course. So I'll try to keep the structure consistent with my 2021 goals. So if it moves on to 2022, then I just create a new 2022 goals sheet. Moving on, we've got OKRs, which are simply objectives and key results. And this is something I learned from the book, Measure What Matters. If you're familiar with what KPIs are, then OKRs are a somewhat similar measurement. But taking a look at one of the examples I've got here, these are a few of my OKRs for my personal brand. And one of the objectives is to increase authority on YouTube. And these are the key results that I will uh, need to hit or target, right? So we've got one hero video per month, and one of the targets is also is increase subscribers from 74 subscribers per day to 500 per day. We're almost close to 500 a day, but not quite there yet. So something I still need to go for. 
increased views from this amount per day to this amount per day and increase ad revenue from 1500 per month to 5000 per month US. And, you know, we are close to that anyway. Um, but these are the key results we are after in terms of increasing authority on YouTube. There are many goal setting systems that you can use, but personally for me, OKRs seem to be the one that I tend to go to all the time and refer back to rather than having goals set once and then not referring back to that system again. Next up, we've got the matrix workspace. And this is just something I created and based on the Eisenhower matrix system. If you have a list of all these things that you need to do, all these tasks, you can just place it in one of these four boxes. So box number one, we've got urgent plus important, not urgent plus important, we've got urgent plus not important, and then not urgent and not important. So if you go through all these list of tasks that you need to do, you can just place, that's what I do. This is what I do if I'm overwhelmed with all these ideas and tasks. I just place it in the right box. So let's say I need to attend to an important email that has to be done right now, or if it's a bug on my website, I would put it right here. So uh, clean up uh, website you know, that, that might have malware or whatever. So that would be considered an urgent plus important task to do. And I would run through this, you know, when I just feel like I'm overwhelmed with a lot of tasks and to-dos. You can use this matrix system to simply filter what things you need to prioritize and which ones you may just eliminate completely, which goes into the not urgent plus not important box and then you just simply archive it so you don't see it anymore it won't bug you anymore moving on we've got my personal brand workspace and you may have seen this in previous of uh, tutorials of mine videos of mine and i will run through this uh, once again if you haven't watched those videos uh, youtube content calendar this is perhaps the most used workspace that i uh, use in notion uh, ideas say in one section where any idea that i come up with video topic or ideas I just place it right here, whether I'm on my computer or on my uh, mobile device. And when I feel like this would be the next video I'll create, I'll then move it to, to script. So then I'll script it, write it, not word for word. I don't do word for word video um, videos and recordings. But once I do create at least an outline or a list of points that I wanna cover, then move it on to ready to record. That's when I go and hit record my video and then follow this outline. Then once I've uh, recorded it. I just go to to edit. So then I my video editor knows what she needs to work on next. Once it goes into to edit, that's when my video editor comes in and then she moves it on to editing. So then I know that she's currently working on that particular video. And once she's done with the editing, then I can see that it's edited and then I can come in and do a bit of SEO. Once it's published, I then move it on to published. So then that's done and dusted rinse and repeat. And this is the basic board or also known as the Kanban system that the uh, Toyota created back in the day, helping uh, the manufacturing of course of their vehicles. So once one thing's done, moves on to the next and the next and the next. So I find this type of system works perfectly for me because I'm more visual and I, I wanna see everything kind of with the bird's eye view. So that's my YouTube content calendar for my social media content calendar, which is for Facebook, Instagram, and other social media platforms. I'm embarrassed to say that I don't use this as much as I want to. And I, because my focus is heavily on YouTube and I do plan on distributing some of my YouTube content into smaller, repurposing some of the content into uh, other forms for other social media platforms. And that's the overall plan, but at the moment, I don't have a content calendar or schedule for any other platform other than YouTube. Now let's move on to a few other things and testimonials here. These are just a list of, you know, some screenshots that I've taken and, you know, we've got screenshots, screenshots, you know, screenshots of not so much testimonials, but these are just, you know, feedback from um, 
subscribers and just unsolicited kind of feedback, positive feedback that I've received from uh, subscribers and customers that I may use in the future on my website or any other purpose like an IG story or case study. So if you're a business owner, why not create a testimonials workspace to just gather any feedback that you may have. And then if you do plan on then adding testimonials on your website, for instance, you can perhaps use that or maybe approach that person that did leave that feedback to see if they can perhaps write a proper review. Next up, I've got my coaching section, which has a list of all my, my coaching students and calls that I've done in the past. So I've taken notes and a few of, uh, so like an actions worksheet that I usually hand out to my uh, students so then they can see what they need to take action on, what they need to do next. And by keeping this coaching workspace that I have, I can keep tabs of what I've talked about in the past and have a recording, like a link to the recording of the Zoom call in that one place so I don't lose track of all the information. Under courses, these are courses that I'm currently working on and just jotting down ideas for a potential course, uh, sponsorships, just a list of all the sponsorship deals I've got and some ideas of videos, video topics uh, for those sponsors. Now with the personal brand out of the way, we've got reading and favorites. These are just a list of uh, links to relevant maybe blog posts, videos that I enjoyed watching or that I want to favorite, articles, perhaps some tools. What's great about Notion is that they have a browser extension for Chrome and I think they recently announced it for Safari. It's called uh, Web Clipper which you can just install for free. And then once you do come across a an article, so let's say I'm on Medium and I find this particular article interesting and I wanna save it and read it for later, I can just click on that little Notion web clipper. It will automatically insert the title of that article or web page, and then I can add it to a particular workspace in my Notion account. So in this case, it's inside my reading and favorites. So all that will be added to that particular workspace. Then I click on save page. And once you've added it through the web clipper, it will add it to that particular table or that reading and favorites uh, workspace that you've got. You can see here, it also includes that particular link so you can go straight to it by clicking on open link. What I like to do sometimes as well is to just categorize it and just selecting article for this one and then choosing what this goes under. So this would be under productivity. And then I can select whether I've read it or not. So I'll click on not read since I wanna save that for later. And that's my reading and favorites workspace in a nutshell. Under SOPs, which stands for Standard Operating Procedures, these are for myself and my staff so that we can use this to refer back to a particular process or procedure that we may have for our business. At the moment, we're currently transitioning a lot of our SOPs from Google to Notion so that we can centralize everything rather than using two different apps. But uh, some of them you can see right here. So under customer support, uh, we've got uh, the follow-up process, how to retrieve purchase links, uh, backing up our website database. So these kinds of things that we put in. So then when we do have uh, a new staff member, for instance, they can just go through this. I don't need to go and explain that to them rather than wasting time. I can just hand them this SOP. So let's say backing up a website database. They can read through that, follow the process and get the same result every time. Moving on, let's move on to core values and beliefs. Uh, we'll just skip on the, uh, the convey agency. That's our digital marketing agency for our local businesses right here. But core values and beliefs, you can see what I have first just as a reminder is if a piece of content, product or project does not align with these values, rethink it. So these are our particular core values and beliefs and this is what I use no matter what business I'm starting or currently running and if something just doesn't go uh, according to one of these sets of values, then I don't go with it. Whether that's a business opportunity, a partnership deal or a sponsorship deal, if they don't kind of, uh, if they don't pass this fil these filters, then I don't go ahead with it. Moving on, I've got project A and B, which I can't disclose. So let's move on to ideas. This is simply a blank page that I just dump all my ideas, no matter how small or big they may be and how ridiculous they may sound. It's better to have it down on paper or in Notion, of course, rather than having it in your head. Have it down, right? Put it down in this ideas workspace. Next up, I've got a templates workspace where I just have a template right now, I just have one. 
for my YouTube uh, content calendar. And I use this uh, basically to share it with my coaching students who may want to start their own YouTube channel so that they can get that same structure, that same format that I use for my YouTube content calendar. And perhaps I may have other templates that I, I may want to share or even sell in the future. So that'll all sit under templates. Now with the work slash business workspaces out of the way, which you see on the left side right here, we've got my private pages, all right? They are just categorized on the private because they don't really fit under any of these projects and workspaces. So therefore I just place it on the private. But the first page that I wanna share with you and explain to you is the fitness tracker. And this is just something I quickly came up with and nothing too fancy. It doesn't do any calculations. And what I use this for is just to record how much I bench pressed or deadlift or squatted or how many chin-ups I did, all that. And it's not so much a fitness program that I follow right here, but it's more so just to record. So let's say what's my one rep max, uh, how much did I lift in that particular on that particular day or when I last hit it. So you can see that I last hit that bench press of uh, that one rep max 115 on April 29th. And I've got other things like uh, how long I held that basic uh, progression for. So it's an advanced tuck for uh, my front lever exercise. And this is uh, calisthenics related. And for something like muscle ups, the number of reps that I did for that was five. If I head to the gym today and I hit a new one rep max, all I need to do really is just to change that uh, one rep max to let's say 120. And basically this is all in kilograms, uh, not in pounds. So hopefully I can hit that new uh, one rep max, but that's what I will do. And the great thing of course, is that it syncs from your phone to the desktop app too. And to run through a few of these other ones, we've got insurances, which I can't show of course, but these are just to keep tabs of the insurances that we have, uh, the premiums that we need to pay, all that. Next up, TFNs, ABNs, and corporate keys and all that. That just has to do with uh, recording also our text file numbers, we've got uh, business numbers, all that, just to have in one place so that I can refer back to it quickly and easily. Next up, I've got my quotes page and simply put, it's just a list of quotes that I have found interesting or helpful, valuable. Put it in onto this one page right here. I just categorize it under, let's say self-doubt. So whenever I feel self-doubt, then I just read a few of these quotes and I feel like that just changes my mindset. And that's how I'm currently using Notion in my business and in my personal life. I feel like I'm just using a fraction of what Notion really has to offer. And as I use Notion more and more each and every day, I feel like there are so many other features, tweaks that I can add to my workspaces to enhance it, to make life easier, and basically just to organize my life a lot better. If you have any particular questions about what you've seen and what I've shared in this video, or if you have any questions about Notion in general, feel free to leave your comments below. I'd love to answer where I can. In saying that, I'd love to create more tutorials around Notion. And if you have any particular topics or ideas, let me know in the comments and I'd make sure to add it to my YouTube content calendar ideas section. For now, if you got value from this video, by all means hit that like button, subscribe if you're new and turn on notifications too, so you don't miss out on future tutorials around Notion, productivity habits, and other tutorials around digital business. Thanks so much for watching, and in the meantime, do watch these next relevant videos.